Hello everyone, this is Mike. This is video number 11 of the SCR Uno series of videos. I wanted to have a bunch of cameras, webcams, uh, pointing to different things in the rig and unfortunately it's not working. I'm going to still do this video. I'm going to try my best to explain this. Uh, I really wanted a cam on the on the tuning knob of the rig and showing the menu. So I'm going to do this to the, to the best of my ability without having those extra cams. Unfortunately, it, it just my system is not fast enough to process all of it. Uh, apologies, but we're still going to move forward. Uh, the rig that I'm using is an FTDX3000. The controlling software I use, there's uh, two different kinds of standards, I believe. There's Hamlib and OmniRig. I use OmniRig. Uh, and the logger I'm using is log for om and the front end I'm using is SDR Uno. SDR Uno is uh, fully OmniRig compliant. I'm going to show you some pictures here of the back of the FTDX3000. Now, I highlighted these previously. You have two uh, options for outputting the signal uh, into the SDR into the RSP1 and the RSP2. You can use the IF output, which is right here. It's this top jack. Let me see if I can zoom in a little. It's not the clearest picture, but I'm just giving you the idea. You might already have your rig configured, everything's running smooth, but I'm hoping this might help uh, people that don't have it set up. Uh, you also have the option of RX out. I prefer to use the RX out because the RX out is not restricted in the amount of bandwidth that goes into the SDR. The IF output is you're restricted to the IF's bandwidth going into the SDR. So if you're uh, set at 8 megahertz, you're not going to see 8 megahertz of signal. With the RX out, you are. So I'm going to assume that you're using the RX out. It's a simple one. It looks like an RCA cable, like the old-fashioned uh, uh, red, white, and yellow cables that go in the back of the television. So that's what that, that's, uh, I believe that's called component. So you would get component to SMA mail, and you would hook that up directly into the input of the RSP. Uh, but before you do any of that, you have to get the drivers configured. So I'm going to assume that you went to uh, Yesu's website. Uh, all Yesu rigs that have built-in USB uh, install two COM ports. Uh, it's going to be a, a, a standard COM port and an enhanced COM port. And it's actually going to be set wrong. Why? I don't know. <laughs> but that's just the way it comes from uh, the prolific, oh, I'm sorry, the Silicon Labs chipset. The driver when you install it's going to give you two ports as I said enhanced and standard enhanced is the one that we want to configure for OmniRig so we're going to double click on that and we're going to go to the port settings now you want to take note to the COM port number by default it's going to be three and four and you want to make sure you don't have any yellow exclamations here that's letting you know the driver was not successfully installed <clears throat> but I'm going to assume that it was installed properly so we're at COM3 we went to the port settings and you want to select a bits per second BPS of 38400 by default it's 9600 the data bits is 8 the stop bits is 2 by default it's 1 it's supposed to be 2 everything else there is just fine now I wanted to have another camera to have picture in picture over here uh, over here showing you uh, a live shot of the rig unfortunately it didn't work so I took a picture of it. So menu 37 in the rig is for CAT. It's going to let you either select serial or USB. You want to select USB. The CAT rate is 38400. That's the, the speed that we just selected in that enhanced COM port. CAT timeout is 10 milliseconds. I'll explain that later. Uh, RTS is disabled. So I'll assume that that's all said and done and, and running smoothly. Now you want to go to OmniRig's website. And let me see if I can actually do this. Just go into Google and type in OmniRig. You're going to want to download OmniRig. It shows you all the supported radios here. You want to go into the download and, and download OmniRig and install it. So it's right over here when you uh, go to the main page and select download. Then you want to also select this INI file. This I can do live. I can show you this it's going to be additional rigs and updated rigs because if you look here the installs from uh, February of 2014 this is from October of 2016 so we'll go into the I'll assume that you installed OmniRig if I'm going too fast I apologize we'll go into our OmniRig uh, install folder
and it's going to be under a free and omni rig now the additional zip let me see if I can pull that up over here it's going to have more rigs so you want to drag and drop all of these into your rigs folder and it's going to ask you to that it wants to update I'll, I'll let it update okay now we want to launch omni rig let me just delete that now omni rig lets you select all these different rigs so this way it will work with all the software that's omni rig compliant some of these rig profiles are not complete uh, they they were uh, provided to, to us from other other people in the community it's this is not from omni rig itself these are other people uh, that created these profiles and uh, uploaded it to omni rig site and uh, made it available to us so I selected the FTDX 3000 the COM port is 3 as I said in in the control panel I'll pull that up again is 3 the board rate is 38400 38400 the stop bits is 2 and the the polling rate and the timeout. You want to set the polling rate uh, to 200 milliseconds and the timeout to 100. Now that 100 is giving us a little bit of headroom for when we tune the VFO physically on the radio it's gonna it's gonna update a, a lot faster. So over here I set it for 10 milliseconds. That's the default. All these blue things are the default. So just change these two right here, the, the polling rate and the timeout. Your rig might be different. This is, uh, unfortunately, this is what I'm using for the Yesu, the FTDX3000. So now we have Omni Rig working. The rig drivers are properly installed. Now the logger. The logger I use is log for om Why am I using log for om Well, log for om is Omni Rig compliant. Uh, it, it's very it's not basic it's it's a, a really good uh, good logger let me uh, pull that up okay, just give me one second while it loads and I'll slide it over to the screen Okay, in, in uh, log for om it's, it's showing you the VFOA, uh, which is what we set in OmniRig. I went into Settings, Options, Cat and Cluster, and I selected OmniRig. There's two main uh, standards for rig control. It's Hamlib and OmniRig. As I said, OmniRig is the one that I choose to use because SDR Uno is fully OmniRig compliant. HCSDR is also fully OmniRig compliant and so is SDR console. So I selected OmniRig and I save it. Now the actual VFO, I'm, I'm tuning it, I'm turning it right now with my with my hand. I, I wish I can get this other cam uh, up and running so you can see it, but as I'm physically turning the VFO on the radio it, it's changing the frequency. Okay, Let's minimize this and let's launch SDR Uno. In SDR Uno, <clears throat> excuse me, you want to make sure the R sync is enabled, and that's telling SDR Uno to sync everything up. So as I tune the VFO, I'm changing it right now. My mouse is right here. I didn't even set the offset yet. It's fully working. So we want to go into the settings. We want to go to O R I G Omni Rig. Select Rig One. We configured that earlier, and just leave these at default. So now let's give ourselves some separation between the two and the ILO and let's hit play. And I'm going to raise the rigs audio. Oh, here's another thing. When you're using an SDR uh, with your rig, uh, a lot of people get confused. I don't use the SDR's audio. It's muted right now. I'll unmute it. It might actually be off on my end over here. I use the rigs audio, which is here. And as I tune around, you, you see the, the, 
it's changing within SDR Uno. So let's go to 20 meters real fast. Let me zoom in and see if I can find the signal. Everything works in unison. Uh, it, the Between the logger, as you can see here. Okay, so let me spin this and let's see if everything is working properly. All right, it stopped at 14032520. 14032520. Everything is working. That's the great thing about OmniRig. Now, like I said, you might, you might be using a different logger. It might be Ham Radio Deluxe or it might be uh, Amateur Contact Log. Unfortunately, I don't use those loggers. I used to use Amateur Contact Log, and that wasn't OmniRig compliant. So I had to use a, a, a serial COM port emulator and split the pair, and it, it was a little bit of a headache. So I, I forwarded a tutorial to the actual developer of Amateur Contact Log, and he has it on his site. So this is just a, a basic primer of how I have everything up and running, and it, it just works great. If this, like I said, if the R-Sync is not enabled, and I tune the VFO, it's, it's not going to work. So just make sure that R-Sync is enabled. I'll uh, go further into this in more detail if you guys uh, need me to. Just write in the comments. I, I check them. And uh, I'll say seven threes for now. Thank you so much for watching this video. And, and as I said, just leave some, uh, leave some suggestions in the comment of if you want me to go further into these uh, rig control videos and, and Omni-Rig and... Uh, using the rig as I said I'm using the FTDX 3000 you might be using a, a Kenwood you might be using a uh, an ICOM 7300 you might be using something totally different but whatever is is available in Omni rig it, it's gonna work I'll just before I, I sign off with you guys I just want to show you all these rigs will work everything that's in this list so as I said seven threes and I'll see you guys on the next video thank you so much